Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons and in this video I'm going to show you how to put together a weekly planner in Eastscape version 1.3. Now uh, version 1.3 has not been officially released yet so I'm using one of the development builds. It might be a little bit buggy but I'm trying to migrate over to 1.3 and uh, I know a lot of my Inkscape videos are getting old so I'm trying to do some new new Inkscape videos with the with the more current versions because uh, Inkscape has seen tremendous improvement over the last few years. So uh, in this video we're going to put together a weekly planner. I need a weekly planner I'm trying to get a little more organized and so I thought I would just record this with you guys. So this is it. This is Inkscape version 1.3 and I have my 11 by 17 uh, template opened up here um, and I, I started the just laying out the title text here and so the very first thing we want to do and and I I don't always do a good job of this but it's a habit you want to have is we want to set up our layers so right now I've got um, all the text on the shapes pages layer which is not what I want so that that shape page layer I use for my white background of my page so we're just gonna go ahead and add a couple layers here we want to add a text title layer and then I'm going to add a um, text regular layer. And I'm going to try really hard in this video not to use the keyboard shortcuts. Because um, I know uh, most people don't learn software that way anymore. I, I am a keyboard shortcut guy because I learned how to use CAD back when everything was command line driven. Because I'm old, an old guy. So anyways, I'll, I'll try to use the menu. Uh, try to remember to use the menu. Okay, so uh, we actually uh, we want the, the title layer to be above the, the uh, regular text layer. So I, you can just drag that up now in the, in the layer dialog in Inkscape. So the layer dialog is one of those things that's, that has seen, has seen a lot of improvements. And the layer dialog kind of doubles now as this outline view. So you can see the entities in the layer here. So I'm going to grab these three text entities that are on the page layer. And uh, I'm going to drop, drop those in text title. And then actually these bottom two, nope, top two should be on the text regular layer. Okay. And now you can see we can turn those off and on with the little eyelid here. And uh, we can also lock layers. So I'm actually going to lock my page layer. Now I can't grab that rectangle, okay, which is what I want. All right, so we want to go ahead and lay out our planner. Now the main thing we want on this planner, uh, it's 11 by 17, is we just want... Um, space for three or four key appointments or meetings every day and then a spot to put the top two or three things that we need to accomplish for the day that's just what i'm trying to set up for my planner i haven't used a weekly planner uh before this because i've always told myself i can't fit everything i need to do onto the weekly planner what i realize as i get older is i'm always trying to do too much and so having a weekly planner with some limited room will hopefully force me to be a little more realistic about what I can get done in any given week, so we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot. Okay, so what I want to uh, do is I want to set up uh, some columns, and um, I am the type of person that works uh, uh, seven days a week, so <laughs> we're gonna see if we can set this up with seven columns. Okay, uh, if if you only use five columns, that's at five days the the five work days. Uh, Monday through Friday, that's fine. I, I work almost seven days a week. So I'm going to go ahead and try and set this up for seven columns. Um, now I've got it set up right now. Uh, the grid is set up with uh, a point, uh, two tenths of an inch spacing. That's kind of my text baseline grid. I talk about that in some other videos. Um, so let's just go ahead and start. I'm going to copy this title font, which is Oswald. Uh, this is Oswald. Uh, which is a Google font you can download for free. This is Dosis, which is a Google font you can download for free. So these fonts and colors are from uh, my company, Redefined Horizons. I just decided I haven't really done a personal branding uh, personal branding guide yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my company colors and fonts, because and I may end up sharing this with with my uh, with my team members, with my employees. So I thought it'd be good to do that. Okay, now just to 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 create a little visual hierarchy here. Uh, I'm going to drop this uh, font size down. We're going to try 24. Okay, and then uh, we're going to go ahead. So you can see I'm just kind of keeping everything aligned on this baseline grid for the text. Let me give myself a little more room there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put in the days of the week. 
Okay. So, um, you know, we got to decide uh, kind of what, what a reasonable spacing is for the columns. And we, we may end up having to mess around with that a little bit. So I'm going to try not to use the keyboard shortcuts like I just did. So we're going to go to Edit Duplicate. And I'm on du Duplicate. And I'm just going to duplicate that text. And um, I'm going to try this spacing for my columns. Okay. So we'll go ahead and create those. Okay. So I'm going over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven major columns. Okay. So I, I'm sorry. I just used the keyboard shortcut, which I'm not supposed to be doing. Okay. So then after you get the first couple of these spaced the way you want, then you can just copy them as a unit. So select them, say edit, duplicate, and then you can uh, move these over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, so what that means is I'm not going to have, I'm not going to have room for seven um, with that spacing. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so this would be Thursday, okay, and this would be Friday. So I may end up having to put the weekend on another planner. Um, and this isn't going to get the full width either, so we're going to have to shorten these up. So we're going to just move everything in a column here. And we'll see how much room that gives us. Okay, that gives us a little more room. I don't know if it's going to be enough. We'll try it. I may, I may have to move things in one more column. Okay, now, I want this to be a fillable PDF. Um, so I know it's a little bit ironic, well, but, but it's ironic because I'm going to create a fillable PDF that I'm then probably going to print and, and carry around on a clipboard. But that's how I want to set this up. So it's not going to be made for handwriting. It's going to be made as a fillable PDF. Okay, so what that means is I'm not going to have a lot of, you know, if it was a, a something you were going to fill out with handwriting, I would have lines that you write above, but we're actually going to do boxes because you can see uh, when I get this into Nitro PDF to create the fillable form, those boxes will help us a little bit. So I think the next thing that I'd like to do is just create some time slots for appointments. And you know what, instead of, in, instead of having actual times like that, uh, here's how we're going to do that. So we're going to set up some boxes. So we're going to say, all right, we're going to put the time here. Okay. Um, and we're going to make that a light gray. Okay. And uh, we'll actually do two, two, let's do two boxes. Let's do a from time and a two time. Okay. Um, now I probably don't want to get, get much closer than, than these two cells here, right? Um, in fact, we can just draw a little line in there to help us remember because we want a little bit of a, of a buffer. So I'm just going to draw that line in there so I remember. We'll delete those later, but I'm, I'm going to draw that in there for now. It's not showing up because I had the stroke turned off. So that's just to remind me I don't want to cross that line with my content for Monday. Okay, now what we can do is uh, we'll put a little little piece of text in here. Okay, so we'll say start time to whatever the end time is. Okay, and uh, we're going to make this 12, 12, uh, 12 units tall. Okay, so uh, that'll be the time slot. And then, you know what? I'm going to actually put that underneath. And then I'm going to put a box for the name of the event up above like that. Okay. <clears throat> now... I'm going to just, for, for design purposes, I want to separate my events. Uh, so I'm just going to do that with a little bar. We'll go to the fill and stroke dialog. I'm going to turn off my stroke and I'm going to just give it that green, RH green fill. And I've got this on the wrong. I want red, green, blue. That'll help. That's the color model there. Okay, so now I've got that bar. And, uh, you know, realistically, if I have more than three of these events scheduled for a day, uh, I'm probably overbooking. So let's just see. 
how we do there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that at three. So I try and limit myself to three events in a day. Um, oh man, you know that's going to be tough. I know I'm going to have. I know I'm going to have. I'm going to do four because I know I'm going to have some days with more than that. Okay, then what I want to do is just leave some room down here for my priority tasks. Okay, which I'm only going to let myself have three or four of those. Okay, so it looks like we're only going to have room for three there. Um, so that's not an unreasonable number, you know, three priority tasks. Um, boy, I'm torn here between do I want more tasks or do do, do I want three events or more tasks? Oh, I think I'm going to get rid of this fourth event and because I'd rather have room for some more tasks. All right. There we go. Okay, we're gonna try that and see how it works. Okay, so now that we've got that done, it's pretty easy now. What we can do is we can just go in and uh, duplicate these. Oop, I'm not supposed to be using keyboard shortcuts, I'm sorry. So we're gonna window select them. And we're gonna go to edit, uh, duplicate. Okay, and then we can just I keep using that keyboard shortcut. Then we can just copy these over. Okay, now now that I have the main layout done, I can get kind of get rid of that guideline that I had in there. Because now we can window select these and duplicate two two at a time. Okay. Okay, now you can see I got off on my spacing a little bit there, so we'll fix that. All right, so I have some more room here, uh, but probably not enough room to uh, to add another another day. Um, so I'm gonna just leave that white space over there. I, I think that's okay. Um, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do, real quick. Let's go over to our layers. I didn't I didn't do a good job. So all of these rectangles are on the text regular layer, which is that's bad. So uh, well, let's make a new layer. We're going to call it shapes. Um, I'm going to put fillable boxes, okay, because that's what we want those to be eventually. Okay, and then I can go in and, and select all these rectangles now. Okay, and I'm going to pull those up to shape fillable boxes. Okay, and I actually want this to be under the other text layer, so we're going to move that down. I want the text at the top. Okay, now these aren't going to be, these these green uh, bars here aren't going to be fillable boxes, right? So we're going to select these and make a new layer, and we're going to call it Shapes Dividers. Uh, let's call it Divider Bars. Okay. And of course, that just got rid of these uh, selection. So we'll select those again. Okay, and we'll just drag those up to uh, the shape divider bars. And then, just as a way to check that, you can always turn stuff on and off to make sure you have it layered properly. Okay, and uh, you can see you can expand and collapse those too. So I have everything. Okay, so I've got a problem here. I've got some text still showing up on the the fillable box layer, right? So I want to grab this text. So I'm going to hold down the shift key as I select here to add to the selection. And I'm just selecting the, the text there for the time. Okay, and then we can go ahead and pull those up too. We're going to pull those into text regular. We can just check. Oop. Make sure we have those on the right layer. Okay, so now we got everything layered appropriately. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save what we have now. Now, just because I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a, I always try and uh, cram too much in, I'm actually going to copy this text down here since I've got a little room on the margin. We're going to rotate that 90. Okay, I'm going to move it up here. And then uh, I'm going to give myself some room to just put some stuff that I would like to fit in. Okay, even though I shouldn't do that. Okay, so we'll change this text here. So I'm going to say stuff to squeeze in. 
okay, which I should not be doing. Okay, and then uh, we'll we'll lengthen this box out here. Okay, and uh, we'll give myself a couple of those boxes. Okay, I'm worried I'm getting a little too close to the margin there, so I'll just give myself a couple of those boxes. All right, so we have most of the planner laid out here, so let's go ahead and just save this to a PDF, and then uh, we'll pop it open in Nitro, and I'll show you guys how to make this uh, fillable into a fillable PDF. Okay, so we'll save that as a PDF. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close Inkscape now. Oh, I can't because I'm still trying to save a PDF, sorry. Okay, we'll close Inkscape. And let's go open that PDF. Okay, so here's our PDF. We'll pop that open. Okay, now this isn't fillable yet. Okay, so we just have the layout here. So what we want to do is we want to make this fillable. Okay, so to do that in Nitro, we're going to go over to the Forms, and we're going to select uh, Text Field. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and say Show Grid. Okay, and I've got this grid set up already at tenth, tenth of an inch by tenth of an inch. We're going to say Snap to Grid. Now, because we use that same interval in Inkscape, you can see it's going to be really easy to line up our fields over our, our boxes, our gray boxes in Inkscape that we made in Inkscape. So let's go ahead and do text field. Now this is really important. You want to set up your first text field um, with with the right fonts and, and, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and make it 10 because I'm, I'm getting a little bit, it's getting a little hard for me to see. Uh, because after you have your first one set up, you can go to, to right click on it and then the pop-up menu say use current appearance as new default. Okay, and um, that's what we want because we don't want to have to set the, the fill color and the text font and the text size on on all those okay and then that's really easy to just come in here and uh, drop these boxes out okay Okay, now I'm not going to make you guys watch while I do all of these, uh, but you can copy. So let me show you that. So we're going to go to select fields now, and we're going to just copy this. Oh, it won't let me. Let's see here. Yeah, it's not going to let me copy. I thought it would let me copy more than one. Yeah, it's not letting me do that. <clears throat> all right, so um, let me just show you how, the, how those work now. So if we come into home... I'm sorry, let's go to forms. Let me turn off this grid for a minute. And we'll go into home and hit this. Okay, so now you can see this is um, selectable. So every Monday, uh, fillable, every Monday I have my weekly owners meeting. Okay. And then I, that's normally from, let's say, uh, 0700. We use military time around here because one of my partners is a veteran and he's got me using military time. Okay, so you can see those are fairly, fairly simple. Okay, now one thing I did not check is we want to make sure that these are um, that these are wrap that the text will wrap. Uh, let's see options. See, I didn't select multi-line. I wanted to do that. So we want all of these to be multi-line except for the times. The times don't need to be multi-line. Okay, so you want to do that. And then that's another thing you can do. You can set that, and then um, then uh, it'll it'll hold that as the default. Okay. So I can just right click this now and say use current appearance as the new default. And then uh, when I do my next box, it should come up, I believe, as multi-line. So let's try that. So if we go into properties now, nope. So uh, it won't do that. I guess you have to set that on every one. So that'd be nice if Nitro would fix that. Okay, now let me show you these these two text boxes over here I want to do with you guys because they're a little bit different because we need to rotate the text 90 degrees. 
So let's go ahead and pull up the properties there. We're going to make it multi-line. And then I got to see where we can rotate this. Rotation right here, we're going to set to 90. Okay, and then let's just try that out here. So we're going to go to home. So you can see this is stuff Landon shouldn't be trying to do this week. So we can zoom in on that. So you can see it's it's uh, it's going uh, 90 degrees current, right? Which is what we want. Okay. So pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and uh, make this uh, all fillable, and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like at, at the end. Okay, guys, so I got all the fields uh, set now on the weekly planner. Um, so you can see, you can come in here now and fill out uh, everything you got going on for the week. Okay, so you could put in your uh, your appointments or your meetings, and then you can put in down here. You can put in your tasks. So we could say update cash flow spreadsheet and uh, perform Brian's monthly look ahead. Okay, so I got a fillable planner now. Uh, that I can fill out and print. It'll help me stay on task for the week and kind of look ahead, get my week figured out. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. Put that together in Eastcape 1.3 and just made it a fillable PDF in uh, the Nitro PDF editor. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.